you are looking live at Lake Skinny Atlas. And we are going to pan around. We are at the end of the uh, brick pier. And I believe we can uh, bring this out. There we go. Get a better look at the shore. Lake Skitty Atlas in upstate New York. It is the place. There's an old church bell ringing. And plenty of boats. And then we have plenty of Lakefront property. Lakefront property. Ah, yes, lakefront property. And of course, we have things like boats. There's a boat right there heading this way. Oh no, look out. Ah. Coming in from a little cruise, I guess. As you can see down through here. This is how long the dock looks. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. People heading this way. Where's the boat? There's one of the boats. There's more than one that cruises this lake, I'm sure. Oh, they're getting real close now. I guess they're going to dock over here. See, let's pull this back. There they come. Here they come. Nice soft landing. site of the Joel Thayer State Gardens, called Thayer Park, and when Mr. Thayer passed away, his granddaughters donated that to the village for public use. And next to that is the St. James Episcopal Church. That beautiful sanctuary dates back to 1874. Look at the tile on the uh, roof. So I'm going to point this boat out to you. This is uh, a Hinkley picnic boat. It actually has a jet in it. Not, it's not use a propeller. That boat cost more than my house in Syracuse. Yeah. Quite a vessel. Looks like a nice boat. So we're coming up on a rectangular white boathouse on shore here. You can see there's like a garage door hanging down and there's a picket fence on top. And a little to the left is a gazebo with a flagpole. That flag's kind of hanging down. Not much wind tonight. But look up on the hill behind. Look at that beautiful house up there. That was built in 1812 for Dr. Samuel Porter. 
He was the first physician in Skinny Atlas. And he actually built that house after he stayed the evening here on his way to Rochester, New York. Looked around says, what the hell am I going to Rochester for? So he stayed here because it was so beautiful. And then in 1836, he sold that property to a fellow named Henry Latrobe Roosevelt, and he later became the assistant secretary to the Navy under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yep, it's who you know, isn't it? judge in the village here. Him and his wife Barbara, Barbara S. Wiles, bought that house together. They raised the family and they had a son named Peter. Peter started Midlake's Navigation in 1968. So of course being the good son that he is, he named this boat after his dad, Judge Ben Wiles. And we have a mail boat that is out of the water this year. It's a sister ship. For extensive repairs, unfortunately, that boat was named for his mom, Barbara S. Wiles. Now the S in Barbara's name was Stickley. She was the daughter of Gustav Stickley of Stickley Furniture. The guy standing on the end of the dock. Look at the lawn just to his right. It goes up to a terrace wall. There's bushes, and then you got the big brown house up on the second terrace there. Terrace lawn. That used to belong to a fellow named Charles Revson. Mr. Revson was the founder of Revlon Cosmetics. Well, who owns it now? So let's do a little history lesson, huh? What do you say? All right, you guys are ready, I can tell. All right, so we are on Skinny Atlas Lake. Skinny Atlas is a Native American name. It means long, skinny water. And guess what? It's long, it's skinny, and it's water. So they actually got the name right. So this lake is part of a group of lakes in central and western New York. They're very special lakes. Does anybody know what these lakes are called? Anybody? The Finger Lakes. Thank you. There's one person listening to me back there. You get the prize. Thank you. So, does anybody know how many Finger Lakes there are? Anybody? Anybody back there? Seven. Seven, I hear. Eight. Any other guesses? Eleven. All right, I'll tell you. Five. That's another good guess. They're all bad guesses. Unless you get the actual. There's 11 finger legs. You guys ready for this next question? How many people did it take? 
to name the 11 Finger Lakes? 11? 11? One, you said? I actually saw the right answer. Then you came up with a two. Right. And why, why did it take two people? Because the first person ran out of fingers after 10. Exactly. Very good. You guys were really sharp. Yeah. Kitty Atlas is one of the 11 Finger Lakes. It's the fourth largest of the lakes. It is 16 miles long and about two miles wide. Huh? Long, skinny water, right? Now, when you get that, we're on the north side here. The village is up north. So you go down to the south side, you get down about seven or eight miles down, the water, the bottom drops down to about 320 feet. It's really, really deep. So this, this lake is very clean. In fact, it is the cleanest of all the Finger Lakes and is considered to be in the top 20 cleanest bodies of water in the United States. That's how clean it is. It's also very high in altitude of all the 11 Finger Lakes. It's the highest of all the Finger Lakes, hence why it's so clean. You don't have land that's located several bodies of water higher to pollute the lake. So it stays very clean. And it's spring-fed, we get a lot of water, aquifers. And of course, when it rains, all the, it's just the hills that, that you get the runoff there's no large tributaries that come into this water. So that is why the city of Syracuse wanted this water supply so badly. Back in the uh, 18, late 1800s, the city of Syracuse's water supply was killing people. You know, all these waterborne diseases, and you know, so it was bad, it was really bad. So they came in and they got the water rights from here. So it took them three years to build the pipeline. They completed it in 1893, and once the pipeline was completed, a 20-mile pipeline, and it didn't go straight and it wasn't level, but it got there. All they had to do was open the floodgates, and Mother Nature took care of the rest. Gravity, this lake is 400 feet above the city of Syracuse. Figure all this water pushing down, and that water just came through the pipes, no problem. And that's how it gets there to this day in the tune of about 38 million gallons every day. So that's a lot of water. So you guys know about the Sherwood Inn, right? The Sherwood? The Sherwood is catering your dinner tonight, by the way. The food's gonna be delicious. So the Sherwood was built in the mid-1800s by Isaac Sherwood. It is the second oldest continuously operating hotel in the state of New York. Now, Mr. Sherwood built the Sherwood Inn as a support for his main business, which was a stagecoach line. And that ran between Syracuse and Buffalo. Luckily for Mr. Sherwood, there were also other stagecoach businesses that ran between Albany and Buffalo. So they ran right by the Sherwood. Of course, that is now Route 20, right? but that used to be a dirt road. So you can just imagine, let's say you were traveling from Syracuse to Rochester, for example, and it was a summer day like today. So you'd get in the stagecoach in Syracuse. Didn't take very long before you were on that dusty road doing six and a half miles an hour, bouncing up and down in this hot, sweaty stagecoach. They figure after a couple hours in the stagecoach, things were heating up pretty good in there. No air conditioning, right? And you're starting to smell pretty good, too. Yeah. So were all the other people in there with you. So you can imagine what that was like. Oh, and then the horse that they chose to pull your stagecoach, his name was Rusty. Oh, Rusty. Oh. Made things worse, right? So by the time you got to the Sherwood and Skinny Atlas, many, many, many hours later, you were ready to get the heck out of that stagecoach, get a room, have a bath, a meal, a bed, and then get back in the stagecoach the next day to finish your journey.
the bill, and they finished it last June with the finishing touches on the boathouse. Look at the size of that structure. So anyway, you can imagine over the years they were building it, I'm driving the boat by here, right? And I'm thinking they're building a nursing home or something. I mean, it's like, look at the size of that. So finally, somebody in the home office caught, caught wind that I was mentioning, well, I think they're building a nursing home. Well, I was told, don't say that because it's not a nursing home. That is a single family dwelling. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing. Yeah. So somebody asked, who lives there? Well, that's a very good question. Unfortunately, I can't tell you. If I do tell you, I'll have to kill you. Yeah, they don't. They just don't want their names mentioned. But maybe when we get have a little private conversation, we can talk about it. Maybe come up to the pilot house later and talk about it. So anyway, um, I can give you a little history on the property, though. It's kind of interesting. Because okay, so I said it took five years to build. They finished it last year. We're at another year, so that's six years. So let's go back seven years. <laughs> that mansion was not there. There was another mansion there, which got torn down yes. to build that. Okay, and that belonged to the McDonald family, and the McDonalds were made famous by a very famous couple that came to visit them and stay on the lake for ten days. That was Bill and Hillary Clinton in 1989 so they stayed at that property with the McDonald's so obviously they were not made famous by EIEIO it was the Clintons so then another piece of history on that property very interesting let's go back a hundred years more back in like uh, 1880s right there was a small house there and it was lived in by a fellow named John Wilkinson Mr. Wilkinson was the inventor of the first air-cooled internal combustion engine for the automobile. And he, and that, that engine was used exclusively in the Franklin automobile that was built in the Syracuse area in the early, early 1900s. So we could dub Mr. Wilkinson as the inventor of that engine, as well as one of the fathers of global warming.
items might be for sale, John. Like maybe it's for sale. We can get it cheap. We think maybe two or three million. Nice Yeah, we're, we're coming up on them. But anyway, we get up to that place, and if those people are there, they line up, they turn around, moon. Oh, yeah, a whole row of moons, I, I swear. And every once in a while, we'll have some people on the, on the boat here come up front or do it in the back, and they return the favor. Yeah, so it, it can be fun. I'm going to blow the horn here, guys. Yeah, I'm not seeing any cars at that place tonight. Of course, it's not the weekend, right? No, not the weekend. They're right about that. It is Thursday night. Yeah, it's almost the weekend, but I'm still not seeing any cars there. I know you're all disappointed. Uh, it would be a sight to see. Actually, we got moon today on a, from a, a kid on a boat. Yeah, it was, yeah, came by and there's there's the moon. And it's like, uh, is that all you got? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was fun. Well, I hope everybody's a little cooler down below. Yeah, the sun has kind of gone behind the hill here and uh, getting a little bit of cool air now from the water, too. Orangey yellow, and as it gets down, it's gonna it's gonna really start turning deep orange and even red. So, with this smoke in the air, should be interesting to watch tonight. Sunset at Skinny Atlas Lake. Wow. Focus tank. There we go. Judge Ben Wiles. and 
and uh, Tim uh, was a professional football player. He also played for SU, Syracuse University, uh, worked for ESPN as a commentator. He was an author. You know, he wrote some books. I read a couple of his books, uh, adventure books, you know, fiction. Got waivers? Somebody waving? Away oh, back there? Was he waving? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it is legal now, you know, so yeah, it's no big deal, right? All the fun's gone out of it. <laughs> it was fun when it was illegal. no clouds in the sky it's clear but you can see all that haze and that's all from that smoke yeah it's just not it's not clouds Quebec smoke talked about the clarity how clean the lake is and yeah it's very very clear water Yeah, yeah. He was an inventor. He also invented uh, a ski binding for downhill skis. You know, with the quick release and stuff. That was his invention. Yeah. This is the state boat launch here. It's the only public boat launch access that's free on the lake. Um, if you want. Now, remember, the lake is 16 miles long. So we're we're a couple miles down right now. We're we're getting closer to the village. And this is where uh, the main state launches. On, on the busy weekends, it fills up.
state police, you know, put the gate down and kind of close it off. So it gets uh, has a capacity. Then you got to go down the lake and launch down there. Fire Air, little regional airline that was his, and also Sair Aviation, which was on the private side of the airport, and they service uh, private aircraft. So. Unfortunately for Mr. Wickstrom, in 1976, January, okay, the Skinny House Airport's right over this hill here, and he took off from that airport in January, flew right into a heavy snow squall, and it brought the plane down. It must have instantly iced up and became a brick, you know. So he didn't survive, but that's what all these, these houses now have been built here because the property's been broken up and, and sold. Maybe we'll catch a little glimpse of the sun through here. That'd be kind of neat. I'll bet you it's pretty red right now. Yeah, we might we might even miss it. I don't know. And this now belongs to the Falcones. This is this is, in my opinion, one of the nicest houses on the lake. It's it's not so huge that you know it makes you sick to your stomach. Um, it's 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 a, just a beautiful place. But anyway, uh, they own Pioneer Enterprises. Pioneer Enterprises is a uh, commercial real estate company. In fact, when you guys get off the boat back at the at the at the dock, if you go up to the street, cross at the crosswalk, you'll go right into the Packwood House. Are they waving up there? Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So that's that's a really beautiful, beautiful home. Yeah, it does. It? So, so here's here's a very interesting thing. Now, notice as we pass the house, part of the Falcon property is all of this undeveloped beachfront here, right? This waterfront property. What's going on with that? A lot of taxes, right? Wouldn't you think it would be like really? Well, that's, that's probably true, but there's a method to the madness. So as we're going along, I want you guys to look up through the trees and you'll see that something is growing up there. Can somebody tell me what's growing up there? Anybody in the back? Huh? A bar. Actually, uh, the, the, most people say, oh, it's marijuana. No, it's not. But it's still recreational drug related. It's grapes. Yeah, if it was hops, they'd have the big poles and the strings, right? You know, because they have to climb. The hops got to climb. So anyway, that's a big vineyard up there, and it's all part of that Falcone property. So in the fall, that fruit gets harvested, and it's not going for grape juice. It's going for wine. So they sell it at a pretty good price to the local wineries, and they make wine out of it. And I'll bet you the Falcons get a free bottle of wine out of the deal. Yeah. Yeah, that plane is just circling around. It's pretty neat. So anyway, what I was getting at was now that you have all those hops and the grapes on there, the entire property can now be rezoned as agricultural farmland including the quote-unquote farmhouse that we just passed. So now they have a big tax break. Yeah, he's coming in for a landing at the airport down there. Maybe even touch and goes. Yeah. Anybody notice the color of that plane? Was that yellow or green or blue? Anybody notice? If it was yellow, that's, that's a homemade airplane. So you ever notice how some of these lawns they have their crisscross? Yeah. Well, you know how they do that? They cut the lawn twice. Yeah. 
go for seven million dollars. Total renovation took three years. They just finished it this spring. Probably another seven mil went into it. Yeah. All right, now check out this white boathouse. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. So, that is where I want to live, guys. That's where I want to live. In fact, you know something? There's enough room in there. We can all live in that house. And if you look up on the hill, there's some more room for, for your friends and relatives. There's a whole other bunch of houses up there. Now, that used to belong to the Robbins family. And the Robbins is the second name in the McKesson Robbins Pharmaceutical Company. So, are you guys ready for another Yabba Dabba Doo? The McKesson Robbins Pharmaceutical Company was the first to develop and, and patent medication in tablet form. Yeah, think about that. up on if you look up uh, once we pass these trees if you look up on the hill you will see there is a very Romanesque kind of mansion up there and the five pillars are all lit up that is Roosevelt Hall that was built in 1839 by a fellow named Richard Dezang he was a prosperous land speculator looks like he uh, speculated pretty well huh then in 1900, that was sold to the Roosevelt family, the Roosevelts. Yeah, and uh, they spent 45 summers here. Notice they said summers. They had other places to go in the winter. Yeah. Then it got donated to the Christian Brothers of North America until uh, fairly recently, probably about six years ago. Then it got sold back to a private individual who owns it today. Coming up on a really beautiful mansion here, off to our left. The first thing you'll notice is the stonework that's kind of lit up with red and blue lights. The, the lights change color, by the way. That is the swimming pool complex. That took three years to build. Now yeah, it's changing color now. See it turning green? Yeah. Yeah. And then look at the mansion next to it. That belongs to Adam Weitzman. Mr. Oh, Weitzman owns Weitzman it. Recycling, Upstate Recycling. And they own metal scrap yards around the state of New York. So of course they make they did very well uh, doing metal scrapping, right? They also own some scrap yards up in New England area. So Mr. Weitzman's done very well for himself, but he also has done very well 
for our community because he's very philanthropic. He gives a lot of his money to charities. He's also very generous with the use of his property, so they'll have some major fundraisers for some of the uh, some of the charities. You know, like Ronald McDonald House or Vera House, those places. So he's a good guy to have in the community. Yeah. 